Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. This week I am doing a DIY restoration hardware antique mirror. I did it all for under $50 and if you're interested in hearing how I did it, step by step instructions and just keep watching this video. All right, you guys, I made my way down to my local Lowe's store and knew that I needed to buy a backing for the mirrors. And so I decided to pick up a large piece of plywood. And if you haven't already known, Lowe's and Home Depot have a cutting uh, station in the back of the wood aisle. And so we took the wood and we decided to make a four by four inch size frame for the mirrors and at first I was going to go with the 3x3 three three, but I decided on the 4x4 four four because I wanted it to be extra large because you know restoration of hardware does everything oversized. our surface with a plastic uh, drop cloth. We got the heavy dutier plastic drop cloth because we were dealing with um, stripper. So we laid down all the tiles across the table and luckily I have a very long table so 16 tiles fit perfectly um, here for my workspace. Once they were all laid out, I was ready to apply the citrus stripper and guys, let me tell you, the consistency was really odd. It was so goopy and very hard to um, spread evenly and so I was a little bit discouraged that this product was not going to work because it was very challenging to spread it evenly and guys, I am really putting some pressure on this paintbrush and trying to melt it inside the mirror. It was just so funny. So because I'm a tiny bit impatient, I went in within half an hour to check on the progress and grabbed my um, plastic scraper and started scraping away just to see if there was any possibility that this was already ready to come off. But to my surprise, it was very difficult. So I tried with the plastic scraper and it was not easy to come off. So I knew then that I needed to wait a little bit more time. I think the actual container says to wait about an hour, maybe a little bit more. So when I had gotten there, it was about a half hour and it was still not ready. It needed to take more time to kind of um, eat away at that paint. So my dear husband comes in and helps me after he sees me struggling <laughs> with 16 tiles removing. Um, he, decided to pull, he decided to pull out the metal scrapers you see here. And um, I was so appreciative because you can see how it's really helping. Um, the project went from me scraping my heart away and you know, when we changed over to the metal scrapers, it like sped up the process so much more. I was kind of kicking myself that I wasn't using this before. But guys, I have to say that this project is very satisfying at the same time. It's messy yet satisfying. And you can see it is like rolling cold stone ice, ice cream. Uh, we are just rolling sections of this paint away. And it was so satisfying. Um, yet very, very messy. So this is why you have to have a wide open workspace and lots of tissues and plastic because it will be everywhere. Once the tiles are all scraped off, you want to take them into the sink. Um, at least it was easier for me to rinse them down with some soapy water. I'm using um, Dawn anti-grease soap here and with my little rubber grippy gloves, um, I was able to get most of the um, product off of them. And you definitely don't want to leave any trace of stripper on there. It will just 
not be good news. Um, you definitely have to handle this a lot, so you wanna make sure you get all of this product off the front and the back. So I took a break after all of the stripping. I was completely exhausted. My arm muscles were dead. So I decided the following morning to lay them out and do the distressing um, on the table on my deck. And here I am with my uh, bleach solution and a tissue that I decided to just spray down and do some um, pattern work. I was just being creative. You don't have to do this. Um, you can use a sponge. You can use any various tools you want to create your distressing aging look. Um, and you can go as heavy or as light as you like with the bleach. Um, I was also spraying from up high to create like misty little dots. And I felt like that was probably the most effective for me. I really loved doing the misting. So if you want a very light, gradual look to the glass, just mist from up high, or you can even use an old toothbrush and set it inside your bleach solution and just kind of flick it. So once the bleaching process was all done, we went ahead and rinsed them off with um, cold water. And guys, I really loved what was happening here. They were all different. Each one was different and yet so beautiful. And I was really happy with what had happened. So once that was all done, we took the tiles out. We laid out a huge piece of cardboard outside. And it was time to cover the backs. Now, in the beginning, I was originally thinking I was going to do gold, but I decided and settled on the black backs for the mirror, and I really loved it. So here I am spray painting all of the backs of these, and I just wanted to let you know, guys, for 16 tiles, you will need two cans of spray paint. Whatever color you choose, make sure that you buy two for 16 tiles. The next step right after that was done, I transitioned and brought my big board out and it was ready to start giving it a coat of paint. So you can either roll the paint onto your board, whatever color you like. I chose to do mine in black and I wanted to just spray. Um, I just wanted to spray the board. It was what I had on hand and I just wanted to kind of do it quickly. And so also guys, this took two cans of spray paint. Um, for this size. So just keep that in mind that if you're going to do a four by four size, you will need two cans of spray paint for the mirrors and two cans for the backboard. So once everything was all done and we were getting ready to hang, before we did that, we put all the tiles out and laid them across the table and we kind of selected a pattern for how we wanted to display the mirror. And we focused on the mirrors that had um, more darkness around the edges and place those around the perimeter. So it was kind of like a vignette. So, but the, the, the whole, you got to make sure that you are creating your pattern before you start gluing down the actual tile. So my husband and I sat there and a good large workspace is helpful because then you can see it. You can also lay them down on the floor. If you don't have a big large table, that's fine. You guys can work on the floor and just pick out the tiles that kind of like make sense. You kind of like want it to look aesthetic and visually pleasing. So we kept those darker tiles around the corners of our mirror. Then we were ready to glue them down once we picked out the pattern of what we liked. And unfortunately guys, I had to switch from the Gorilla Glue because it was just another step in the process. Gorilla Glue requires a little bit of water activation and then you have to wait. And so there was a there was a little bit of a hang up there. And so my husband decided to just take some caulk that he had in the garage and put it in his caulk gun. And we just went to town and he glued them all down for me. So this process went by really, really quickly versus the Gorilla Glue that would have required an extra step of waiting and wetting and all of that stuff. So um, cut time down and just get some caulking glue or anything, any super strong commercial adhesive um, that will work as well too. So guys, this is the finished product. I am extremely happy with the outcome that I pulled off something that most stores sell for thousands of dollars for under 50 bucks. Guys, and you can do this in whatever size you want and you can do as much or as little distressing as you like, as well as any color that you like. 
This was my inspiration from Restoration Hardware's um, catalog. I fell in love with the antiqued mirror and um, yeah, I hope you guys like it. And if you did, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so by liking this video that tells me you enjoy the content and you want me to continue creating more. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video soon.